This is the introduction to Sindarian poster. Sindarians include hard corals, soft corals, jellyfish, box jellies, anemones, hydros, sea pens, fire corals, and cythonophores. There are 9,000 living species and they can be found in the oceans from the tropics to the Arctic, from the shallowest to the deepest water. The hydras also live in lakes, streams, and rivers. They can be microscopic in size or large enough to see from orbit from space, like the Great Barrier Reef. All Sindarans are characterized by a radially symmetrical body with a mouth surrounded by tentacles. They are all carnivores, using stinging cells in their tentacles called nematosis to stun or kill prey and bring it into their mouth. The corals look a lot like bryozoan, but Sindarans are much simpler creatures with a very primitive digestive system. If Sindarans' mouths and tentacles point down like a jellyfish, it's called a medusa. If the mouth and tentacles point up like coral, it's called a polyp. Our fossil corals didn't build giant reefs like they do today, or were they as abundant as the bryozoans, but there are many species to be found in the upper order division. Horn corals are especially numerous and are often mistaken for a dinosaur tooth, horn, or claw. Jellyfish are free swimming Sindara, and their mouth and tentacles are on the bottom. Hydras are the only Sindarans that live in freshwater. Here's the anatomy of a coral, tentacle, mesentery, pharynx, mesenterial filament, connecting sheet, skeleton, scleroseptum, and a basal plate. Sea anemones attach themselves to the seafloor and their mouth and tentacles are on the top. Individual cor coral polyps are tiny but they can build some of the biggest structures on earth. I'm going to show some close-ups of this mosaic framework of small imagery around this poster. A friend of mine made these for the dry dredgers and spent a, did a wonderful job making all these posters many, many hours of time. I will mention that I have seen uh, jellyfish like this in the freshwater. It's very rare, and biologists ask that you uh, send in the information where you found it. It's just an incredible thing to see in a freshwater lake. I had it in a jar. It's amazing. Check that out. I have some large coral heads, fossilized coral heads that have come from Kentucky and these are very heavy. Um, you can see the honeycomb like uh, cells, holes where the polyps came out. Typical evolved coral. And this is a breakaway uh, showing the internal structure of the coral, the little individual chambers 
and the radiating pattern that it came from from the center. This animal started out as one, uh, one singular polyp and it cloned itself, asexual reproduction, and made more and more budded, budded off, had budded offspring, and they uh, grew one, one beside the other, and each chamber, uh, one grew one on top of another, and it sealed off the. Uh, the lower chambers were older and not used, and each living generation builds up very slowly. So coral takes uh, many years for coral to grow large, uh, each chamber growing on top of the preceding one. And uh, to get to a decent size, it represents many, many years. There's a much larger one here, and you can see the humble beginnings at the center. Uh, this was the origin about this area. Part of it's broken away, but this shows the radiating pattern from which all these chambers radiate outwards from. And of course, as they were getting larger, they were multiplying as well. And this is a really nice white crystalline surface. We've got some brown minerals mixed in as well, but let's see a close up at the chambers. I turned this. So you can see the top is this, from this side. Here's the back side, very plain, just looks like a big uninteresting rock, but it's when you see the individual chambers, uh, it's a telltale sign that it's a coral. And there are many of these in certain parts of Kentucky. This is a picture of horn coral depicted what it looked like when it was alive, but there were soft tentacles of a single polyp, a giant polyp, that lived in these giant horn corals. Um, giant in comparison to the small coral polyps which are usually the size of a BB. These things are several inches long. So these polyps would uh, catch prey and bring the tentacles would catch it and bring it into its mouth and then it would eat it. This hard shell, this shows a, di this is a diagram of its anatomy. Okay, the septal grooves, these are all the lines that come from this septal division like radiating spokes of a wheel. There's a bunch of horn coral that was just recently found and cleaned up and put here to show everybody. Show some of the grooves on the inside. It does have some matrix, rock matrix mixed in as well. These horn coral were collected free from the matrix just uh, easily picked up off the ground. However, some of them have a lot of crud uh, on them, a lot of rock matrix attached to it. Uh, this one has a lot of stuff stuck inside of it. This rock has three. This one was unusual because it looks like two of them stuck together. like one went into the opening of the other. I could be wrong, I'm not an expert on this, but it certainly looks that way. This one is unusual because it has so many uh, snail borings. Snails have uh, file rasping like tongues that can uh, drill down in through shell, brachiopods usually. In this case it was a coral. All these little holes were drilled in attempting uh, attempts of animals to uh, penetrate the shell to eat the animal itself. So this shell was under attack. The one on the side had the same problems too. Same thing on this horn coral, on the little holes.
out that traveling hole. Something cut right through that before it was fossilized. There's all the different sept on the inside. 